developing your capacity to hear that's what is going to be our you know sharing today and how do you develop your capacity to hear a lot of times you know i always say something god is not mean he's not wicked many times he gives you instructions he gives you directions and when he wants to lift you up he gives you an assignment or he gives you a direction or he gives you something you need to know that's right. Today we're going to be talking a bit about developing your capacity to hear. Right. And we took that text from Revelation 3, verse, verse 20. And he said something very profound. He said, if you would what? Open the hear door. My hear my voice. And open the door of your heart or your mind to hear it and to what? And to allow me to come, come in. I will dine with you. And I think you stress that area of you dining with him. I mean, let's just place a picture of you sitting with the Lord Jesus and he's dining with you. Just sitting there and mm. being with you. Mm. How will it be? Everything about your life will be transformed. You know, that's what he did for Peter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It actually, in amplified version actually says it will restore you. Amen. Imagine Jesus Christ dining with you. Imagine. The food he gives you will bring a yeah. refre health yeah. and refresh into your body. And then the words he speak will, will bring affirmation to, to your you. soul, to you. And then that's what it is. I mean, Peter was His feeling... presence. His presence is just up. Amazing. Mm -hmm. Peter was feeling like a failure. Mm -hmm. After he had betrayed Jesus Christ three times, he said, guys, I go out fishing. I don't, you know. He was disillusioned with the whole thing about faith. Yeah. But Jesus Christ came mm. and he affirmed him and he restored him. Yeah. And that's what I believe when Jesus Christ comes to dine with mm. us, he will bring restoration, mm. he will bring healing, and he will yeah. help us to refocus. Mm. But it must happen when we hear his voice. Revelation 3 20. If I behold, I stand at the door of my heart and I knock. Mm. He said, if anyone hears my voice Hallelujah. and it's opens the door, is to hear. He oh, comes to the, knock. Yes. He wants us to hear. That's correct. Mm. The, the, the beauty of hearing his voice. Mm. It will solve you. It will save you so many problems. Mm. Instead of knocking, getting your head knocking against the wall over and over, mm. coming all kinds of crises from all crises, the beauty of hearing his voice. No will spare you all that. Amen. And that's what I want to just share with you four points that I believe Amen. will help anyone mm. to be able to develop the capacity to hear mm. the voice of the Lord. And number one is tune out the noise, the noise from this realm. Mm. As a Christian, we live in two realms. We are here, yes. but we are also raised up with Christ, Christ. seated with Christ in the heavenly places. Mm. And that's why we must hear what heaven is saying. And heaven is always broadcasting. Mm. So we must be able to, if, if this thing is too loud, we can't even hear what heaven is saying. So that's why Jesus Christ will have him, he will go, obviously he will go to a solitary place. Mark 135. Mm. Jesus arose early in the morning, while it was yet dark, Hallelujah. and he went to a solitary Jesus. place and prayed. He tuned out everything else. Mm. So you could hear what heaven was saying. Mm. So go into places where you can be quiet, and hear what heaven is saying. That's number one, what heaven is saying. Number two, see yourself as a sheep. Hmm. That's hard. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you don't drive sheep. You herd sheep. Herd. <laughs> yeah, you drive goats, you drive cattle, but you don't drive sheep. You only herd. And when you herd them is what Jesus Christ said in John 10, 3. It says, the shepherd goes ahead of the sheep. And the sheep follow. And the sheep follow. Jeez. Says, if my sheep hear my voice and they follow me. So the way a shepherd leads is he goes in front. Mm -hmm. And the sheep follow. And it's his voice. His voice they hear. And then the voice of a herd they will not follow. Because they have known his voice. Mm -hmm. So we need to be like a sheep where we're always looking out. And hearing that voice, and that voice says, Turn right this way, they turn right, it says, Turn left, they turn left, because we are accustomed to hearing his voice. Mm -hmm. And that's what we must see ourselves as a sheep. And it takes humility, it takes being teachable, mm -hmm. 
Amen. Knowing that you don't know everything, and there's a God, God knows the future and can guide you accordingly. Amen. Number third point is that use big measures to hear. To hear. Bible says in Mark chapter 4, Amen. verse 23 and 24. It says, If anyone else hears, let him hear. It now says, With the measure you used to measure, that is the same way it will measure back to you. Mm. 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 The measure you use, that means the effort and time you, you create to be able to want it to hear mm. will be the time of Restore. power mm. that will be restored back to you. In other words, mm. Yeah. Mm. you can either use a measure of a teaspoon <laughs> to hear God's voice. You can use a measure of a bowl to hear God's voice. You can even use the measure of a drum. Mm. Or you can use the measure a of a big truck. <laughs> <laughs> or you know, like when you go to state to stations, I mean other states or cities, you see that big elaborate water tank. Yeah, water tank. Yeah. <laughs> so just, I I think it's a measure because if only you only have a time of hearing like when you're on Sunday when you come to church and the rest of the that's week, not enough. You don't even hear the Bible. You don't have anything. Your measure is small. But if you're a person that comes to Sunday worship service, you come for the midweek service, then you have your own time every day where you hear his word and you have your own quiet time. And then in the meantime, you have books you read, you have um, the sermons you listen to. You know what happened? You have a big measure, you are measuring. And that's the amount you, of power. Is that what it yes, is? That's, what. that's the virtue that comes to you. The amount of thought and study you devote to the word will be the amount of virtue, virtue. and power that will be. Measure and I think you. that's one thing that is missing in the body of Christ. That's why there's no power, there's not much because nobody, everybody's waiting on just the pastor to teach, and they don't spend as much time in accumulating in allowing the word of God to fill their hearts in such measurable, such big amount. That, that is correct. You see that people who are doing great things for the kingdom, the word of God is constantly, constantly, constantly. constantly going. It's constant. We need to hear the word of God all the time. Mm. So those three uh, uh, tips, one, tune out this noise from the world. Number two, see yourself as a sheep. Number three, use big measures. Mm. Create time and effort to wanting to hear the voice of Hallelujah. God. And the third one, obey promptly. Mm.